Hi guys, Ivan here. Today I would like to introduce the man in the browser attack. So let's zoom in. Okay, I would like to explain the man in the browser attack compared to the session hijacking attack. So let's, uh, in this scenario, we have a, a victim a computer that is connected to an e banking system or any other website. And let's assume this website is prone to the so called cross site scripting vulnerability. An attacker is then injecting malicious JavaScript into the browser of a victim. Uh, this uh, JavaScript could then um, exfiltrate the cookies, the session identification, to a third party server, to the so called C2 server. C2 is the command and control server. The attacker is remotely controlling the C2 server, um, sending a script to the C2 server that is then launching a fraudulent payment. Uh, on behalf of a victim's user, using this ticket. This uh, attack is um, not very realistic these days. It requires a cross-site scripting vulnerability on the e-banking side, which is not that realistic. The attack is uh, origin from a uh, foreign IP address, not from the same IP address as the victim. The C2 server is not having the same um, fingerprint, browser fingerprint, not the same user agent, and, and so modern e-banking applications will potentially detect these kinds of attacks. For sure, a JavaScript could also launch uh, directly the fraudulent payment via uh, cross-site scripting vulnerability, but this is um, not very uh, stable because it requires the vulnerability on the e-banking side uh, and uh, the attack would then be limited to this e-banking website. So the JavaScript cannot access uh, or inject or attack other e-banking or other websites. And to bypass this limitation and to bypass a vulnerability on the website, on the e-banking site, there is a modern attack called the man in the browser attack. I created a, a research project, project and created a malicious Chrome web extension. Let's assume again we have a, a victim that is connected to the e-banking site and the attacker could install this malicious Chrome extension into the victim's browser. The installation is not requiring any local admin privileges. It runs with the same privileges as the user that is installing the extension. And um, once this uh, Trojan horse, if you wish, is installed, it uh, starts pulling the C2 server for commands. The attacker is then creating JavaScript, sending it over to the C2 server that will then be downloaded into the victim's browser. So the advantage from an attacker's perspective is uh, whatever website this browser is then visiting could be e-banking, trading, uh, social media. So whatever, this attack will work for any website the user is, vi is visiting. And this makes it very dangerous and powerful from an attacker's perspective. So the JavaScript uh, will then launch the fraudulent payment. In the prototype uh, I have created, uh, this prototype can access uh, customer data, account details from e-banking systems, create new transaction or change in a transaction that the user wants to add and, and um, inject malicious JavaScript. Of course, if there is a second factor or, or uh, transaction signing, this could not be altered by the attacker. But uh, if, uh, the, um, so in, if the amount is less than a certain amount, then some banks are not asking for uh, transaction signing. And if the transaction signing is requested, um, it, de it depends on the user if he really reads uh, the message, the confirmation carefully. Whatever has been seen or will be seen in the browser can be altered by the web extension. Um, this is the first video about the man in the browser attacks. I will deep dive into the concept of the Chrome extension in a, in a future video. And I would also showcase, or I, I have plans to showcase this uh, uh, for several e-banks uh, uh, providers. For now, uh, Shadow DOM, the concept of having a separated DOM 
is a good one uh, mitigation step against these kind of attacks uh, or any other technique that is uh, analyzing user behaviors in the browser because a malware can not yet uh, add a transaction that behaves same identical as a user would for typing speed is different or the click uh, the click links or the the order of the clicks are different and so forth um, so that's for now thank you for watching take care bye bye